When I first hit the water, I kind of just went into blank out mode. And she always had that high elbow. That freestyle catch, even when she couldn't make it across the pool, she was getting her arms out of the water, and you could tell that she had kind of a natural feel. I thought right away Katie got right into the rhythm of her stroke. I don't think Katie, although she'd been swimming really fast, anybody thought that she was going to be contending for a gold medal. I was sitting in the stands watching, and as a, as a trained coaching eye, you realized pretty quickly that she hadn't worked that hard at the front of the race, and there wasn't any reason she couldn't, couldn't sustain it. When I saw that her third 50 was faster than her second, when she was actually speeding up to set up her second 100, I had a thought in my head that this is going to be pretty special. Just watching that, that world record line that she was on and just shaking my head in disbelief. I kind of said to myself, OK, first of all, I'm at the Olympics. Second of all, I'm in an Olympic final competing for a medal right now. And third, I'm winning. Come on, Katie, hold on. Ledecky is one of the finest swims you'll ever see. 15 years of age, the youngest ever to win the longest race for women here. She is a fierce competitor. Katie Ledecky, world record holder. You might see her and have some conversations with her when she's out of her swimsuit and out of her cap and goggles. It's like that's her superhero costume. Win or lose, you're going to get the same Katie Ledecky every time. It's like the great dichotomy in Katie, right? You know, outside of the water, she is the most humble and genuine person I think you'll ever meet. But, you know, gosh, you get her in a competitive situation, and she just, you know, she's a different person. Doing something not to the best of her ability, I just, I think that idea just doesn't register with her. I think that she has always had a good identity away from the pool. And I think that's one of the reasons why she's successful is because as much as she loves to swim and probably considers herself to be a swimmer, you know, she's much more than that. When I first got here after the London Games and she was asked what was the biggest change in her life being now a 15-year-old Olympic gold medalist, and her biggest change was that her brother left for college. Um, and I think that sort of, you know, summarizes their, their relationship right there. He's my number one fan and I'm his number one fan. They're a wonderful family. Uh, the parents are uh, smart, hardworking, and love their kids. They've never pushed me in the sport. They've always just supported me in what I want to do and what I enjoy. They knew that I loved swimming uh, from the start. I just felt like she was always able to leave the pool or leave the race at the end of the day and still know that, you know, there was people that loved her and that, and that it, you know, life was good. Tell me about your first race. How was it? Actually, yeah. What were you thinking about in the pool? Nothing. <laughs> Just trying to finish, huh? If she wasn't super famous right now, I still think I would look back and think of her as a really, really intelligent swimmer for her age. With Katie, you could always just tell her, "Hey, fix this, fix that, tweak that," and she just picked it up really, really quickly. Um, so it was really fun to give her lessons. You know, selfishly, as a 16-year-old, you're coaching this 9-year-old who picks up things really quickly. You know, I think that even as an 8-under swimmer, when Katie dove in the water, you could see that she, her goal was always to try and get her hand on the wall before everybody else. She wanted to be a high school swimmer and be part of the community and just felt that was something that she needed all the hours she spends in the water, that this was kind of her release, maybe. I was entering my sophomore year when I came back from the Olympics in 2012, and everybody was very supportive, and it was just a lot of fun to share that moment with them, share all those memories. And then when I got back to school, it was just back to school as a normal student. She's not unusually tall. If you look at the awards stand at most international meets, she's usually the shortest one up there. 
Um, she doesn't have any particular physical attributes, either long wingspan or big feet or big hands that, that set her apart. At the United States Olympic Center, they actually do what they call an elite athlete health profile, where they run them through all kinds of tests and measurements and batteries of tests. And I got about a 55 or 60 page report after that. And about the third sentence in the report was, um, overall, the findings are remarkably unremarkable. But most of that's, you know, that's right on the spot there. Stanford, so the rich keep getting richer in the Bay Area between Cal and Stanford. Their swim programs continue to get bolstered. When she was an age grouper, she would swim uh, kind of more like a classical female distance swimmer. And Katie was just so strong and she raced with such a fury that it's like, I think we need to harness this in a different way. My stroke is a little bit unique. I swim with a little bit of a gallop. And there's an uneven cadence to the stroke and there's a little bit of rise and fall in the profile in the waters as she swims with it. She only put for one side. You know, she's really strong in her catch with her left arm, so that's kind of her anchor, and it also allows her to kick within her stroke. Some people have said, oh, she swims like a guy, and I think it's the strength in the water that allows her to do that compared to, compared to a lot of other the female athletes. So, Kayla Jackie comes to the wall and touches an 8 Uh, the September or October before Olympic trials, which were in June of the next year, we sat down and had our annual goal setting meeting. And we were just talking through each of the meets and we got to Olympic trials and he said, now Katie, what would be the ultimate goal at Olympic trials? And I was like, I, I don't know. And he said, come on, you know. And I said, make the Olympic team. And he said, say it again. And I said, make the Olympic team. That was pretty much the whole conversation on that. We never really talked about it after that. I may have shared it with my mom right after the meeting. You know, like, I can't believe what I just said. <laughs> now, don't tell anybody, mom, but, you know, I think I could maybe make the Olympic team or it's sort of a goal that we set. It's a little, you know, it's a little out there, but um, yeah, other than that, no, I didn't tell any of my teammates or, or anybody, really. I remember in 2012, uh, it's sort of funny how I never visualized myself getting anything but gold. Uh, I would, you know, lie in bed before a nap or, or going to bed that night and I would uh, close my eyes and visualize the race and I never let myself visualize anything but gold. And it was just, I would try and try to visualize myself getting, oh, you know, fourth or fifth or, or eighth or second. Um, but I wasn't capable of doing that and I think I would visualize myself winning and I never really 100% believed that I could do that but uh, just having that, that visualization I think allowed me to slowly believe that I could compete at that level and get my hand to the wall first at the Olympics. We didn't really talk about it in terms of, oh my gosh, about the Olympic Games. It was never like, oh my, you know, you're going to swim in the Olympic final. You know, it's cliche to say, but it was just kind of another race. The defending gold medalist was the hometown girl, Rebecca Adlington. And she was in the lane right next to me, so she walked out for the race right after me. And we just told her, we said, when you get out there and you hear that noise for Rebecca. Take all of that noise, all of that energy, and focus it down my lane. But it was just amazing when uh, Katie uh, just shot out of the blocks and was in first place. You know, she flips at the 50 wall. You know, she comes off that. She's still moving really well. The field is kind of right there with her. That third 50 that she had, uh, it was actually faster than her second 50. At that point, I was also kind of using my stopwatch not only to get her splits and her times, but to get her stroke rate, her tempo. And we had talked a lot about during that time period at swimming at a 1.4 tempo. And she immediately kind of got right into that. If you listen to the, the TV commentator. Because who knows, but Dickie may not have the endurance in the second 400. They're sort of saying, oh, she might die, she might die. But they were right. <laughs> I was going out way too fast. 
She could sometimes have that tendency to spin her reels a little too much on that first hundred. I just look back on that race and I think, you know, what moxie Katie had, what maturity, even at that time period, what trust she had herself to kind of get out there, feel her way to the front half of the race and just tell herself, man, I'm going for it. We started screaming and, uh, you know, we had a scream for a few laps, but she just powered on, on through and blew the rest of the field away. Whenever I would breathe during the race, I would kind of hear these sound waves like, ooh, 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 the f it's just what it sounded like to me. And I joke afterwards that they were chanting Becky, 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 and I was just pretending it was Ledecky, Ledecky, Ledecky. And then I remember flipping at the 600 point and it was like waking up from a dream. And she said to herself, I've done plenty of 200s before, there's no reason that I, you know, no way I should blow this last 200 when I was already ahead. Ledecky is one of the finest swimmers you'll ever see. When I touched the wall at the end, uh, it was a pretty crazy, surreal moment in my head. It was, it was sort of hard to wrap my head around it, I think, at first. Uh, I think I remember more just everything that came after that. Uh, just getting the medal, seeing my family for the first time, seeing my coaches. All of that uh, is more distinct in my mind right now than the actual motion of touching the wall. <laughs>